So the, there's different types of plagiarisms. The one I really want, the ones I really want to focus on, uh, are these. Uh, the article that you all read cover most of these as well. There's direct verbatim plagiarism, self plagiarism, mosaic plagiarism, paraphrasing is a type of plagiarism, and accidental is surprisingly a type of plagiarism as well. So I'm going to go into each one of these. So direct plagiarism is exactly how it sounds. It, where It's where a writer copies an entire sentence, paragraph, or maybe unfortunately even an entire work uh, and uses it directly word for word in their own paper and passes it off as their own paper. There are no citations. We aren't covering citations this week. We are we do APA style formatting and research for this class, but a citation is where you give credit to another source that isn't your own. So direct plagiarism lacks, it has zero citations included. So it is plagiarized. So just an example of direct plagiarism, um, if there was an article, we'll say an article, this is the original text from it, and this is a paragraph, and in an, I'm just going to say student essay, but just because we're in class, but plagiarism can occur anywhere in a professional or academic situation. Um, but just since we're in class, I'm using, I'm saying student essay as an example. Um, so an example of direct plagiarism in this case would be if the person copied this entire paragraph and pasted it directly into their paper. So everything underlined matches this exactly, and there's no evidence of any kind of citation here. So that's an example of direct plagiarism. Self-plagiarism surprisingly can happen. Um, did you, you can plagiarize yourself, as odd as that may sound. Um, did you receive an assignment that reminds you of a previous paper you wrote? If a student uses a previous paper from another class, or even a previous essay from the same class, they are self-plagiarizing. They have to receive permission from both instructors to use their work again, and it's oftentimes that it still wouldn't quite work out. So that can be avoidable by just writing again from the start and not using previous papers or essays. Mosaic plagiarism. Uh, a writer remixes original work to pass it off as their own. Parts of a sentence are used in the student essay. Words are slightly changed to kind of seem original, but it's still not quite an original piece of work. Even a summary of another author's idea is plagiarism as well. No citation included, so it is plagiarized. Now, mosaic plagiarism, I, I find it a little bit difficult to comprehend, so I have a sample here as well. I like to have the samples to kind of picture it a little bit better. So if we're thinking about this original text that I've been using as a sample, uh, an example of mosaic plagiarism in an essay is where they just take parts of the paragraph and put it in their, in their own essay and it's it's called it's almost like patchwork plagiarism where they just take parts of the paragraph and place it into their writing but then they add maybe two or three words in between each directly copied sentence to make it seem like it's their own but there aren't any kind of citations and it's still directly taken from this taken from the source so it's this is an example of mosaic plagiarism Mosaic plagiarism may not happen intentionally. It may be very unintentional because if students are learning to do research for the first time and, you know, they're starting to write their own work, but they're also using sources for a research paper, mosaic plagiarism may very well accidentally happen. And um, that's why in this class, we, when we work with our research papers, we really focus on how to correctly cite information, how to correctly use APA in-text citations to give credit to a source to avoid incidents like Paraphrasing. The article separated paraphrasing from mosaic plagiarism. So paraphrasing occurs when an author uses valuable information from a source and rewords it in their own paper. P paraphrasing is an excellent way to do research. You just have to make sure that you always give a citation to it as well, since paraphrasing is still not the author's original thought. They are borrowing that thought or idea or theory or concept from a source. So paraphrasing is a lot more difficult than it sounds. Changing a few words 
does not count as a paraphrase. It does not count as rewording information. The entire statement must be rephrased entirely for it to be paraphrasing. And regardless, you still always have to have a citation there because you're borrowing the idea from a source still. So think about this. Think about what is the worst type of plagiarism. A student's plagiarize or people in general, right? But like I said, we're just focusing on it in a classroom context situation. Uh, people plagiarize for many reasons. Um, out of time, last minute, you have to turn something in. P people may copy and paste stuff. And laziness is unfortunately another reason why plagiarism happens. The last two are what I really try to focus on in this class to help you all learn how to cite sources correctly and fairly. So not understanding how to cite, not being aware of specific citation rules, that is something really important that we are going to focus on starting next week when we go into APA style more, just to avoid, you know, accidental plagiarism as an example. The worst offense, in my opinion, you may disagree and that's fine, but the worst offense, in my opinion, is copying and pasting an entire work sentence, few words, or an idea without citations because most likely the author is consciously aware that they are copying and pasting something and that doesn't seem like it's right. So we have to understand how to avoid that and use citations and not copy everything directly anyways. We have to really focus on our own writing even when we do research as well.